So Virginia Bausiero, hope I said that right, is the author of How I Finished the Entire Free Code Camp Curriculum in Nine Months While Working Full-Time. The articles on the Free Code, uh, Free Code Camp web website, and uh, I will link that site, and I hope they're not for profit and this video is going to be not for profit and I'm totally going to reference this but I needed something to be able to re-listen to this with my hands free so I hope you uh, Miss Virginia or Ms I hope you don't mind my recording your article here I will totally link your article uh, under the video and I will make no money from it so I hope you don't mind my recording this. Uh, if you want me to take it down or give you the video recording, let me know, um, and I'll do that. During the past year, I, and that I will refer to Virginia Bausiero, finished the entire free code camp curriculum while working full-time as a teacher. In this article, I will outline how I managed to do this, that's Virginia, particularly how I organized my time and what supplemental material I used, Virginia Bausiero, and that's the Free Code Camp website. Background. First, the backstory. Virginia wasn't completely new to coding. She grew up in a small tech company. Her father founded his own company before she was born where they carried out different activities within tech, such as fixing computers, setting up internet connections and networks for other companies, teaching computer courses, and building administrative applications for companies. It was a small town, so they were basically the go-to tech guys for the whole town. The company's offices were in our house, so I literally grew up among computers, that's Virginia, and people who liked them. Virginia started playing around with Visual Basic as a kid. One of the guys in the company taught her how to use it, and she spent all her free time online chatting with fellow nerds. When she was about 12, one of those nerds emailed her a web development manual, a huge .txt file that basically dealt with HTML, and she used it to build her own fan site. It even had one of those cool visit counters. She hosted it on GeoCities, got a free short URL, and listed it on Yahoo and AltaVista. Those were the uh, biggest ones at the time. After that, life happened and she completely gave up on the idea of being a programmer, as the circumstances demanded for a more realistic approach. She won't go into the details now, but basically she had to give up studying and get a job. She went on living her life she built the occasional website for her dad's clients and then eventually decided to start teaching English, which was something that came easy to her and basically forgot all about web development until 2016, that is. How she decided to switch careers. Sorry. <clears throat> She loves teaching. It's a rewarding profession, interesting and fun, but it has its downsides. At the beginning, everything felt to her like a cha challenge, but after so many years doing it, she began to feel that she had no purpose, that she wasn't growing or learning anymore. She was feeling stuck. Like her job was exactly the same year in and year out. She was just going through the motions. It also didn't offer a lot of opportunities to relocate, which is something that became very important for her later on. In 2013, she met her husband, and the next year they went on a three-month backpacking trip to Europe, 
which is a whole different uh, B-log post. So this, I guess she consider this, considers this a B-log post. Please give her page a click as I'm reading this almost word for word, and uh, she deserves all the credit. But basically, it was extremely low budget, and we had an awesome experience. We loved Europe, and we decided we would come back for another long trip. I guess this reading is like the ultimate text-to-speech. Time passed. She, uh, they did other stuff, and then she found Code Academy and started to play around with it and a toy with the idea of becoming a full-time developer. She already had some experience building websites with just HTML and CSS, but no JavaScript. She was reading lots of success stories online. See, that's a good idea for motivation, reading success stories online. But she still didn't consider it a real career, not by a long shot. Meanwhile, uh, her and her husband were planning their next long trip, saving money, planning, and so on. She was working as a freelance translator more and more super involved with her career, translating cool stuff like novels and poetry. 2017 came, and they went to Europe again, this time for two months. There they met a bunch of developers. It was crazy. Every single couch surfer they met seemed to be in IT, that's information technology, somehow either as a software product manager, a developer, a tester, and so on. They all encouraged them to get into tech. By that time, they had already decided they wanted to move to Europe, so a lot of them told them, a lot of the people told them, you could find a job here. Developers are in demand here. We need a lot of them. Before the trip ended, they made the decision to sign up for a two-year technical certificate in a newly founded technical university near their hometown. The program was mainly Java, so when they came back, they started a Java course in Coursera. Coursera. So they, what was that, Code Academy and Coursera. The first module was actually a JavaScript course, so they actually got hooked with JavaScript immediately. While they learned JavaScript, they waited for the beginning of the school year in March 2018. There were only 50 spots for the UNI. So they got super dedicated and learned beforehand. They went, took tests, past courses, and then they had to wait until they decided. They got the highest marks among all the candidates. But those marks didn't make a difference. The spots would be assigned via a lottery system. Her husband got in, and she was left out. Her husband decided he preferred to learn by himself. He wasn't that interested in Java anymore because he was hooked on JavaScript. So they started learning on their own. They started with Code Academy, but it wasn't it was too handheld for them. They didn't have premium accounts. Somewhere they read about free code camp and they started it very slowly at first. The first certificate took them months to get. Admitted, admittedly in the middle the curriculum was changed and she dropped her laptop and had to get it repaired. After the summer holidays ended and uh, she went back to full-time work, things got hard. Working full-time and doing free code camp at full speed. It wasn't easy, she won't lie. It helped that most of her friends and acquaintances don't live near her. And she lives in a small town that doesn't offer a lot of entertainment opportunities. In that sense, programming was a lifesaver. She had something fun to do, and it was addictive, so she could kill hours of boredom with it. 
So that helped a lot when dealing with the amount of hours she spent doing mental work, teaching, and studying. The first certificate took months, partly because she was waiting to get into UNI, UNI, and partly because she was working 10 hours a day for the first three months of the school year. Unfortunately, she couldn't just quit her job and study full-time, since she needed to pay the bills, so she had to get really good at three things. 1. Time management. 2. Discipline. And 3. Organization. Time management, discipline, organization. Time management. She started work at 7 a.m., so she started getting up at 4.30 a.m. on most days. She started the day with free Coke Camp challenges and coffee. Okay, sorry, free Coke Camp and coffee. So, and that's 4.30 a.m. Sometimes she would also read from a book or do other tutorials, depending on what she was working on at the moment. She also studied during her lunch break and after work, but she came to terms with the fact that she wasn't so productive during the week because of work. So during the week, she did mostly short challenges, reading, and so on, and she worked on projects on the weekends, holidays, and free time. Sorry about that. Um, where was I? So wasn't productive during the week because of work. During the week did mostly short challenges, reading, so on. Worked on projects on the weekends, holidays, and free time. If she had 30 minutes, she'd read 30 minutes. If she had 15, she did some study for 15 minutes. She employed every single free moment of her day to study. On Sundays, she would meal prep most of her meals for the week so she didn't have to spend time cooking and she didn't have to end up eating unhealthy stuff. She also planned and gathered everything she needed for work for the week so she didn't need to spend extra time besides the normal work hours. Luckily, after June, her work hours were reduced from 10 to 12 to 8. Excuse me. So she was now working a normal schedule, and there she started to pick up the pace. Discipline. You will have to study even on days you don't feel like it. Here is where motivation also plays a big role. But discipline is important, especially if you're like her and get distracted a lot with social media and cat videos. The best tip she can give you to fight the temptation to read articles online is this. If you come up with a question in your head like, how do planes fly? Which is usually the type of question that gets her carried away and sucks her in for 30 minutes. Write it down somewhere and promise yourself that you can read all about it after you finish what you're doing. 99% of the time you won't care anymore because those questions just pop in your, up in your brain because it wa wants to get distracted. Push through and you'll beat it. Another aspect of discipline is having to choose study over other things. This is not the not so fun part. I had to give up on many, she had to give up on many, many things she enjoyed to favor studying and she can't wait to be able to go back to them. She did it just because she wanted to become a developer as soon as possible. See motivation below. But even if you're not in a rush like she was, you might find that you spend a lot of time doing things that, even though they're enjoyable and nice, take up too much of your time. You will have to prioritize and make hard choices. Motivation. She had a very strong motivator, which was becoming a developer and moving to Europe. This was her goal for a long time, a long, long time, and she reached the point where she was getting frustrated that she wasn't getting it. All her friends left town. She had virtually no family there. 
She felt isolated and wanted to leave. That's what pushed her. It felt like a fire beneath her feet. She felt she had no choice. You need a strong motivation to do radical changes. I don't know about you, but I'm a don't fix what isn't broken kind of person. So it's really hard to get her to do things just for the sake of doing them. Her hobbies are all very practical and productive, gardening, yoga, cooking. She needed to have a reason to do them. She wants free veggies. Her back hurts. I'm hu her. She's hungry. If you're anything like her, you will need to find a carrot to keep you going. Spend some time thinking about this. What is it exactly that you want to accomplish by finishing free code camp? What do you want to change or get in your personal life through it? The curriculum and supplemental resources. The following are some of the supplemental resources she used on her free code camp journey. Bear in mind this is not an exhaustive list because she did tons of Googling and that some of those, these, those courses are not free. Uh, by the way, for me, alternatives to Google are things like DuckDuckGo, um, Swiss Cows, and other websites. All right, responsive web design. All right, some of these courses are not free. Responsive web design. This was the part that she had already had some experience with, so it was easy and fun. She used some supplemental resources, especially for Flexbox. Her favorite place for this is Internetting is Hard. I'm not going to link the website uh, to Internetting is Hard to encourage you to go to her article for the link. I hope that's fair. Um, so that hopefully she'll forgive my reading this online. Again, I'm not getting any money from this. JavaScript algorithms and data structures. Once she got into the JavaScript modules, she got hooked. Everything was super fun. She learned a lot, and she was eager to put it into practice. For this section, she used books mostly. She already had enough exercises with free code camp but she needed more in the way of explanations. Beginning JS, that's JavaScript, has tons of exercises as well. So the first one is Beginning JavaScript, 5th edition. Um, I tend to avoid Amazon personally and try like Barnes & Noble and other booksellers. You don't know JS. Mm. Uh, oh, it's the GitHub. Okay. Oh, here, yeah. You don't know dash JS. A series of books diving deep into the core mechanisms of the JavaScript language. This is the second edition of the book series. Oh, that's cool. It's a, a download. I'm going to leave that up and download that after this. Um, programming foundations with JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Uh, that looks like Coursera. Enroll for free. And JavaScript documentation. That's the Mozilla Developer Network. If I was you, I would bookmark the MDN page as it has lots of useful things. Um, I'll look at that later. By the time she reached this section, she also jo joined One Million Women to Teach to Text. One million women to text. One M W T T. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, that may be a a bad link. Summer code of code program. 
She learned basic Python and basic to advanced JavaScript, which helped a lot, especially with promises. Learning Python also helped her reinforce some basic programming concepts. She seriously recommend, recommends that when you feel confident with JavaScript, you try a new language, just its basic concepts. You will be way more comfortable afterwards once you know how to do the same thing with different tools. JavaScript Frameworks. This section was great too, as it gave me a foundation in React and Redux. She had been already following a React course on Udemy. Uh, by the way, Udemy has sales uh, different times of the year. I would wait until the courses go on sale, often 90% off. I personally like Udemy. So, and I noticed this has 102,000 ratings and 4.6 stars, which is pretty good. And I personally have one of Schwartz Mueller's courses. So I bet this is going to be a pretty good course. So she recommends the React course. She highly recommends this course and others by the same author. He's incredibly thorough and his explanations are awesome. This was one of the few Udemy courses where she actually followed along the project that he makes. She normally watches the videos and applies the principles to whatever she's working on. On One Million Women to Tech, she had a React week that was mostly React Native, and then she started playing around with it. By that time, she also started working on her side project with her husband, which they decided was going to be a PWA with React. Um. Not sure what PWA stands for. She cannot stress how important it is to build something of your own from scratch. She has learned way more in a couple of weeks building their app than she had learned with any course or tutorial. APIs and microservices. This section was a big revelation for her and changed everything. Up until that module, she was certain she wanted to be a front-end developer. But after learning Node.js, she started thinking about being a back-end or full-stack developer. Building APIs is just so much fun, and you see results so quickly. She started building her first small full-stack projects, and she got very excited. Some of the resources she used. The complete Node.js developer course, second edition. So the link now goes to third edition. Um, and that has 54,000 ratings at 4.7 stars. So that looks like a good course, too. The ratings, at least, are pretty good. And it's $85. But again, I would look for sales on the Udemy courses. I like Udemy. Node Girl's intro to back end, back end develop. So some of the resources she used, that Udemy course. Also, Node and Girl's intro to back end development with Express. Okay, I don't know much about that website. Node Docs. So that's the nodejs.org website. Express Docs. ExpressJS.com, Node School. That looks like an interesting website, actually. NodeSchool.io, REST and GraphQL API design in Node.js v2 using Express and MongoDB. Frontendmasters.com courses node-js. Looks interesting. Some of these websites I didn't know about. 
During this time, she was also volunteering for 1MWTT, and she was requested to build a ProBot app for onboarding volunteers with Node. This also gave her some practice with Node, which was great fun. Uh, ProBotGitHub.io Okay, QA and information security. This module was also an eye-opener. Up until then, she had never written a single test in her life. Now, she loves writing tests. And she even got super interested in test-driven development. She mostly used the docs for this section, but then she decided to test her front end as well. And she found this amazing course on Udemy that she cannot recommend enough. The instructor, she says, is by far the best instructor she's ever seen on Udemy. She cannot wait to consume whatever other courses she releases in the future. Let's see, chijs.com. Oh, React testing with Jest and en Enzyme. Okay, I never heard of Bonnie Shulkin, um, if I said her name right. Almost 3,000 ratings, like 2,782 with 4.5 stars. Not bad. Looks interesting. It's $99.99 right now. But again, Udemy does have sales. Hello there. I'm Vienno, and this is my first useful tutorial on D3. Good. Sorry about that. Data visualization with D3. This was the hardest certificate hands down. The explanations were good, but once you get to the projects, you find out the challenges only cover the first project, and you're kind of on your own for the rest. And there aren't a ton of good resources online. She mainly read the docs and used tutorials. Here are the resources that finally got her through this certification. Again, go to her article if you want the links. Let's see, d3.js tutorials by D3 Vienna. Um, okay, that's a YouTube playlist. And D3 documentation. All right, that's on GitHub. Tips to finish the curriculum. To sum up, these are the things that helped her the most in accomplishing her goal of finishing the curriculum. Use the curriculum as a roadmap, but supplement with other resources. Don't get stuck for long. Ask questions. Google Pair Program or use some other search engine. Hope you don't mind if I put that in. Set realistic goals for each day and week. Don't beat yourself up if one week you're slower. Life happens. Don't let it throw you off course. Keep your motivation in mind. It's what will push you through the tough days. Prioritize. You will have to cut down on the time you spend doing other things. Don't forget to take days off. They are vital to the learning process. And get enough sleep. Which reminds me, I need to get to bed soon. After free code camp, I felt a bit lost. She felt a bit lost. This was the roadmap that guided her through her journey from teacher to developer. After a few days of reflection and planning, she devoted herself to her side project, which she's building with her husband. They're learning and having fun, and they're very excited about it. And yes, she did get a job offer right after finishing the curriculum. But more on that on an upcoming article. And that one I'm not going to record, so you can go here and look at that. All in all, I could, couldn't have learned all that she has learned so quickly had not it been for free code camp. And I'm extremely grateful to everyone who makes such a wonderful project possible. If you feel the same or, and are able to give back, please consider donating to free code camp here. Huh. Okay, thank you. 
And uh, again, uh, that was Virginia Bausieros article. And please go and have a look at it yourself.